Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'd like to share with you about one of the methods of research which is called the qualitative research. So I am your professor, Brother Joar Salferas of the order that is called Scarmelite Secular. So I'm the program head of peace and development in our institution, Cotabato State University. So to start with, I think in your mind, when you're still in college and until today, taking up master's degree, based on our discussions, you know already what is research, the different uh, parts of research. Now, we'll be discussing about this method, the qualitative research. So, qualitative research is commonly known as interpretative research. Its method relies heavily on a thick verbal description of a particular context being studied. So, that's qualitative. So, ibig sabihin dito, kung na yung nakukuha mo na data, sinusulat mo. Kaya, verbal description. In toto, isinusulat mo. Then, you just qualify. Mayroon tayong tinatawag na thematic. Kaya, alam na alam na ninyo yan. When you took up research in your uh, undergraduate. Okay? So, once again, qualitative research is commonly known as interpretative research, which is more on verbal description. Next, then generally, qualitative researchers spend a great deal of time in settings because uh, being studied like in the field work. So, karamihan dito, minsan ibinababad, like what, what I did in one of my research Nagbabad ako doon sa field So that you will know Who are your respondents Their works and everything Kaya nga is more on verbal description Rely on, the, on themselves As the main instrument of data collection Subjectivity Intersubjectivity So that's why there are a lot If your mind is more on quantity Medyo minsan bias ka dito sa quali Qualitative method Why? Kaya nga sinasabi more or very subjective siya. But the main reason there is you'll be able to know to get all the results kung ano yung mga sinasabi ng respondents. Then analyze data using interpretative lenses. So kanya yung sinasabi is yung nusulat, interpret mo. Kaya nga, according to the theme, kaya nga sinasabing thematic research din ito. Depende, then... Uh, according to the respondent, i-qualify mo yung kanilang mga sinasabi na pare-pareho. Okay? Then, there are characteristics or general characteristics of qualitative research. A data, data sources are real-world situation. And why? Because you want, if you want to know really the result, you have to go to the field. Kaya field work, real-world situation. Then, the data are descriptive. Sabi, descriptive, more on verbal. Kung ano yung sinasabi, isinusulat. Then, emphasizes on the holistic approach, the processes and the outcome. Kaya nga, if you are in the field, inobserbahan mo yung mga tao, whatever is your, is your study. If you, you want to study the culture, if you want to study the traditions, magbabad ka nun, you know. Be able to know ano yung mga proseso ginagawa niya. And then, what will be the, the outcomes of that research? Then, the data analysis in induct is inductive. And you know what is inductive? Between inductive and deductive. So, inductive, di ba? nag sa general to specific. While deductive to specific to general. But the one of the characteristics of the qualitative research it should be the data analysis is inductive. So, you look at the whole picture. Then, after that, you go to the specific details of that uh, picture. Okay, then describes the meanings of research findings from the perspective of the research participants. So, kaya nga, sabi natin, more on verbal description because you have to know everything, the meanings. Depende kung ano yung mga pananaw sa iyong respondents or the participants. I think malinaw yan sa inyong lahat. Then, use, uses inductive reasoning. Sabi natin in your mathematics, in your philosophy, in your logic, you know, sabi na natin inductive reasoning from general to specific. Then, involves developing generalizations 
from a limited number of specific observations or experiences. Sabi nga, sabi natin, look at the whole picture, then himay-himayin mo yan doon sa magiging specific. So, from general to specific reasoning. Then, highly dependent on the number and representativeness of the specific observations used to make the generalization. So, dependent on the number and the representativeness of the specific observation used to make generalization. I think that's clear. So, what about the strengths or advantages of this qualitative method? Take note of the advantages or the strength. Number one, one of the advantages of the qualitative methods in exploratory research is the use of open-ended questions and proving. Once again, one of which, the use of the open-ended questions and proving. So, gives participants the opportunity to respond to their own words rather than forcing them to choose from fixed responses as quantitative methods do. Then, open-ended questions have the ability to evolve to evoke responses that are meaningful and culturally salient to the participants than unanticipated by the researcher than rich and explanatory in nature. So, malinaw. Okay? So, doon, kinukuha mo lahat. So, sabi nga, from general, hindi mo pinipilit yung mga respondent sa kanang responses. Kung baga, walang fix answer, konde malawak siya. Kaya nga, kung nagtatanong ka, this open-ended question, sub to invoke responses. So, marami. Marami silang masasabi. Sabi natin, if you want to know culture, palaliman mo. Then, unanticipated by the researcher, minsan, mamangha ka sa mga sagot nila. Ay, akala ko ito yung sinasabi, pero may sinasabi silang iba. Okay, then, rich and explanatory in nature. So, yun yung isa sa strength and advantages. Pero ulitin ko ha, pag your mind is more on quantitative method, magsasabi ka, ah, wala yan, subjective masyado, parang dinikdiktahan ang tao. But in this case, hindi mo dinikdan, hinayaan mo ang respondent mo, ang participants mo, na magsalita, na magsalita, kung ano yung nagdepende sa question o mga katanungan mo. Okay, malinaw. Second advantage and strength. Allow the researcher the flexibility to probe initial participants' responses, that is, to ask why and how. Ah, yan yung advantage din. Okay? Hayaan mo. Bakit? Paano kaya ito? So, hayaan mo niyang, kaya nga, research the flexibility to probe initial participants' responses. Sir, in case pare-pareho yung sagot, kaya nga ikaw nang mag-qualify. Kaya nga usually sinusulat, if you have uh, 15 respondents, then 7 of the respondents said that ganito ang sinasabi nila, out of 15, 7 nagsabi ng ganito. So yun, ikaw nang bahala dyan. To the question, are you ask why or how? Okay, that's a strength or advantage of the qualitative method. So once again, allow the researcher the flexibility to probe initial participant responses. Third, exploratory advantage. The researcher can get an in-depth responses to make the study substantial. Okay? An in-depth study, in-depth responses to make the study substantial. Kaya nga, kung gusto mo talagang suriin ang gusto mong malalaman sa iyong research, Ayun, ayusin mo rin ang pagtanong at ang gusto mong ikunin sa mga participants mo para sufficient, para substantial yung kanilang iba't ibang mga sagot. Okay? Yun yung exploratory advan advantage. So, that's one of the strength. Then, from the strength, take note, there are, there are also weaknesses. So, balance yan. Weakness, weaknesses or issues in qualitative research. Number, letter A, gaining entry. What does it mean? I think, alam naman siguro ninyo. Then, 
contacting potential research participants. So, iyon din yun ang problema. Ang dali ba mag-contact? Mahirap ba? Pakainin mo ba? Lahat-lahat. Ang dami susulat ka ba sa kapakapitan? So, yon That's a weakness. Selecting the participants by random, sampling, or depende. Okay? Mahirap din yan. That, that's why that's an issue. That's a weakness. Paano kaya? Pinipili mo lang? Kailangan ba mag-volunteer sila? Sabi ko, nagdepende sa study mo. Then, enhancing the validity and reducing bias. That's also... A weakness. Sabi ko nga, if your mind is more on quantitative method, at talagang bias ka dito, than leaving the field. Uh, in my experience, medyo marami-rami na akong napublish din na research, more on qualitative, kasi in peace education is more on qualitative research. So, what happened to this qualitative research? Pag alis mo, anong mangyayari sa respondents? That's why, with my experience, I went to Uh, Ninoy Aquino Municipality yung Sakulaman ang mga tao doon especially our brothers and sisters na mga manobo sabi nila brother ang dami-dami nang nagre-research sa amin tapos nung umalis uh, nag immerse nga sila dito pero pinangakuhan kami na babalikan kami But until today, hindi pa bumalik. So here comes, nandito ka na naman. Kaya nga yun, sabi ko, wow, baka anong kapalit nito. But what I did, ina-explain ko naman sa kanila. But before I went there, so ang ginagawa ko, of course, nag-ipon ako, nangutang pa nga ako, nag pa ako for my dissertation. Kasi kailangan yun, pakainin sila, bigyan sila ng ayuda. Kasi that's part. Kasi they are expecting also in return sa kadami-dami. Kung baga, ibig sabihin, marok na rin sila. Ah, ginagamit lang kami, tapos pinaasa kami. Pag alis, wala na. So that's an issue, that's a weakness of the qualitative research. Then I went also part of my respondent doon sa Carmen. Doon sa Libungan, mga manobo din. So ang ginagawa ko, talagang binabalikan ko, pinasapasalamatan ko sila. Nagpakanduli nga ako doon sa libungan kasi medyo malapit-lapit sa lugar ko. Then they're very happy. Kaya nga in leaving the field, kung nag-field work ka, kung nag-immerse ka, talaga ang hirap. Minsan nga na-attach ka sa mga tao. Yung attachment to the people with their problem. Pero pag alis mo, what's next? Babalikan mo sila? And what will happen? Okay? So yun yung weakness. Then gaining entry, yung sinasabi natin the first one, the access to a very much dependent upon the researchers, researchers' personal characteristics on how others perceive the researcher. Ayan, ang paningin. Then, may require considerable negotiation and compromise with the gatekeeper. Yun bang kung paano ka pupunta sa lugar? Siguro, in your undergraduate, hindi yun masyado problema kasi may mga teacher naglilid ngayon in your master's degree in gaining entry of course pupunta ka una magdaldala ka man ng sulat di ba you'll go to barangay captain to the chieftain or whoever is the traditional leader kausapin mo o pang malakyan to the mayor pero ang hirap niyan sa pagpasok mo sa kanila kasi hindi ka man din basta-basta papasok dyan kasi may tinatawag ding protocol if you will enter to that place then you did ask permission baka manganib ang buhay mo. So, protocol, you have to ask permission. Then, sinasabi dito, trust is earned, not given. So, dapat yung ditiwala ng tao makuha mo to the leaders first bago ka makapasok sa lugar nila. Okay. Then, yung sabi natin, contacting the participants related to gaining access, dealing with gatekeepers, then, The issues of building trust and ensuring confidentiality and anonymity. So this research, confidential, kaya usually mga research question, may name man doon, usually optional ang sinusulat natin na hindi pwedeng i-reveal yung kanilang katauhan. Kasi kung sensitive yung study mo, ayun, nanganganib din ang buhay ng respondent kapag na-reveal yung kanilang katauhan. Kaysa nga nga, that's part, yung contacting the participants. 
What about selecting? Is fraught with difficulties in identifying and selecting an, an appropriate number of participants who can provide the useful information about the particular topic or setting being studied. Ah, ito lang siguro buro barangay captain sa isang lugar o puro kagawad kunin natin the puro leader siguro kasi sila yung may alam or baka bulahin lang tayo o doon talaga tayo sa grassroots so, kaya ngayon, selecting the participants medyo magka problema din yan next, the threats to validity in qualitative studies observers bias okay, yun yung sabi natin invalid information resulting from the perspective of research brings to study and imposes upon it so yun yung magka problema okay Invalid information resulting from the perspective the researcher brings to the study and imposes upon it. Kaya nga ikaw as a researcher, kung baga may hinahana, may, may, you have the statement of problem with the questions, okay? From the statement of problem, may, may, bubuo ka man ng lima or hanggang sampung questions from the statement number one, statement of the problem number one. So, ang punto ngayon, in your mind as researcher, ay, dapat ito yung sabihin nila. Dapat mataas para ito yung resulta. Then, what about pag hindi mataas yung resulta? What about sa pag-interview? Iba yun, salungat yung uh, idea niya kaysa sayo. Okay? So, yon ang nagkakaroon ng bias. Kaya nga, yun, the threats to validity in qualitative studies. Living the field, yung sinabi na natin, the bonds form in the study participants complicate the living and setting then time constraints okay kung ilang araw ka magbabad o isang araw lang ba or ilang minuto ka lang doon then alis ka kaagad problema yon. then when the amount of accessible data is sufficient okay na ba yon? kung okay na you have to leave the field kung kulang pa so dagdagan mo pero kung na-attach ka na sa tao nagsimpatize ka sa kanila so ano ngayon? Aalis ka lang, anong iiwan mo doon sa field? Okay? Then, there are types of qualitative researches, the qualitative traditions of inquiry. So, take note, there are five. I think there are five types of qualitative research. The first is biography, life history, and oral history. Then, the phenomenology, which is the lived experience. Then, the grounded theory. When they talk about grounded theory, there are many, many kinds of theory that we should look at. Then the ethnography, number five, the case study. So, isa isa hin natin dito. What about this biographical study? I think you know what is biography. Okay, bio means life. So we are talking about the life or the study of an individual, of his or her experiences as told by the researcher, or found in the documents and archival material. So, pag ang research mo, kailangan mo punta sa field, then mayroon man din yung sa mga archive, mayroon din yung mga documents. It can be a document analysis. Alamin mo ang buhay ng isang tao. Then, what about the life? History. This is the study of individuals' life and how it reflects the cultural themes of the society. I think naintindihan naman yan. Then, we have also the oral history. The researcher gathers personal recollection of events, their causes, and their effects from the individual or the several individuals. So that's oral history. History. Then the researcher needs to collect extensive information about the subject of the biography. So it can be oral. It can be life history. So kailangan mo talaga ng pag-aralan mong mabuti yon. Kasi pag may mali-mali yon magka problema ka din then somebody mabasa yung research mo you're, usually your research your thesis pinapadala yan sa national library okay when you graduate in our institution one of the copy of your research ipapadala yan sa doon sa national library which means kung may makabasa tapos mali mali yung information like if you want to know the life of Sultan Kudarat i don't know kung may nag-aral na And of course, the life of Rizal, alam natin yan. It's history. It's oral. Okay, history. 
alam na alam yan. That's more on the biographic, biographical study. Uh, ito yung mga sample of the titles of biographical study. The Life of Jose Rizal, a documentary. So, of course, if it is a documentary, you have to consult a lot of documents. The books, written, of course, Pwede bang oral, no? It should be a documentary. Naka everything is documented. Then, the comparative analysis of 19th century scientists, a common and contrast. So, kailangan din yan. Then, who is Lapu-Lapu? A closer look to a brave hero. I think may mga study ng ganito, but this is just a title, sample titles of this biographical, alala nyo, biographical study. Second is phenomenology. From the word phenomenon, which is an event, life's event, then logos study. So it's study about life. Kwa natin, kaya nga, describes the meaning of the lived experience about the concept or a phenomenon for several individuals. So not only one individual, but several individuals. Usually, in this study, either 10 to 15 respondents, kasi individuals, pwede na. Okay? It has roots in philosophical perspective, like Husserl, Heidegger, Sartre, Merleau, Ponty. Then, we have also the Max van Monen, the Manchel, especially in nursing. Are you familiar with this uh, philosopher like Edmund Husserl the phenomenology of Edmund Husserl Kai Heidegger I think you encountered that one Kai Sartre John Paul Sartre okay about existen existentialism I think you have to encounter and the rest of the philosopher okay that's more on phenomenology once again it's the lived experience or about the concept or phenomenon for several individuals. That's phenomenal. That's the type of qualitative second type. Then, to add, according to Mustakas in 1994, in his research page 13, to determine what is an experience means for a person who have had the experience and are able to provide a comprehensive description of it. Take nota provide an experience unable to provide comprehensive description of it especially to the experience of that individual then from the individual descriptions general or universal meanings are derived in other words the essence of structures of experience so that's more on phenomenology the lived experience according to Mostakas in 1994 in his uh, book in page 13. So, example of the sample of the titles of the second type of qualitative phenomenology like phenomenal research and adolescent female sexuality discoveries and application. Then, an in-depth exploration into a sexual experiences of people with mild or moderate intellectual disability. Next, example near-death experiences among critical patients a phenomenological analysis so more on the experience of individuals itong phenomenology so take note on that but the majority of you are peace and development major so what you are going to do in your research you have to anchor your study on peace there are a lot. Sir, paano gawa ng child? Sir, paano? Sabi ko, you had already an experience when in during your undergraduate. So, when we had our first meeting, the face-to-face -face meeting, sabi ko, you can go to our library. There are a lot of titles there. There are a lot of thesis and dissertation. Usually, sa bandang huli dyan, mayroon din yung sa last chapter, ba? Recommendation of Further Studies. There are topics there. There are titles there. So, you can choose those titles na kung saan doon kahiyang. Okay? So, mga nagtatanong anong requirements, that's the main requirement of this research. 
you have to produce three titles, of course, until methodology. And you have to defend the titles, okay, at the end of this semester. Okay, malinaw yan. The third uh, type of qualitative research or method is the so-called the grounded theory. What about this grounded theory? Based on symbolic interaction interactionism, which posits that humans humans act and interact on the basis of symbols, which have meaning and value for actors. By the way, this grounded theory, there are a lot of theories now. You can do research about the different theories, these grounded theories, which is related to your study. So once again, this is based on the symbolic interactionism, which poses that human act and interact on the basis of symbols, which have meaning and value for actors. Then, the intent of grounded theory is to generate or to discover a theory that relates to a particular situation. So, I told you there are already theories. You can do research if it is related to your study. Sir, wala pa talaga. You can also make your own theory. Baka wala pang nag-aral talaga yun sa study mo. So, pwede rin. Then, if little is known about the topic, grounded theory is especially useful. So, pwede din itong gamitin. Itong grounded theory. And you can explore on this grounded theory. Maliban ditong sa sinasabi natin. Then the data analysis generates a visual picture, a narrative statement, or a series of hypotheses with a central phenomenon, casual conditions, context, and consequences. Then the researcher needs to set aside a theoretical ideas or notions so that analytical or substantive theories can emerge from the data. And this is also known as the systematic approach, ang grounded theory. Okay? May mga sistema. Kaya nga, from inductive reasoning, you go to the field, go to the participants, alamin mo yung mga sagot niya para magiging systematic. Kaya nga, this is part of this uh, type, the grounded theory. Samples, sample titles, using grounded theory in the feminist research, a research about women's exclusion from administration position in primary education. So, pwede. So, of course, sino itong mga respondent mo dito, participants mo sa yung study, of course, mga kababaihan. Okay? Especially those nasa position na. Another example is the delivery of quality nursing care. A grounded theory study on nurses perspective then another example grounded theory learning an application of grounded theory in educational practices sa peace pwede mo ring gawin ito sa peace itong grounded theory then the number four types of qualitative research is the ethnography ethnic Okay, alam niyo yan? A description and interpretation of a cultural and social group or system. The researcher examines the group's observable and learned patterns of behavior, customs, and ways of life. So, yun yung mga tinitingnan mo sa research na ito, yung the ethnography. Okay? Patterns of behavior, the customs, the ways of life, even the philosophies of life. Okay? In a social or cultural group then involves a prolonged observation of the group typically through participants observation so you have to go to the community or go to their place then observe kaya medyo matagal-tagal ito especially itong mga ethnic practices nila their culture patterns of behavior customs or their way of life so yun yung tinitingnan sa topic na ito sa type of uh, qualitative research the ethnography then like field work kailangan mong key informants then the thick description the emic or insider group perspective or the ethic or the researcher interpretation of social life 
then the context important, the need holistic view, then need grounding and anthropology. So, kaya nga kailangan kang magbabad. You have to need itong grounding in anthropology. And you know what is anthropology? From the word anthropos, which means man. And logos is study. So, literally, anthropology is the study of man. Okay? So, yun. Dapat, yun yung titingnan mo. Kaya sa type na ito, yung ethnography. Another need extensive time to collect data. So, ayaan mo. Kaya matagal. Kailangan mong babad. The immersion is needed in ethnography. Hindi lang man na ilang araw lang. Ah, ganito na yung mga tao. Ah, ganito na pala sila. Ah, ganito yung pamumuha. Hindi yan. Basta-basta. You have The, you have uh, there is a need of an extensive time okay then many ethnographies may be written in a narrative or storytelling approach which may be difficult for the audience accustomed to usual social science writing so yan medyo mahirap yan so once again many ethnographies may be written in a narrative or storytelling approach which may be difficult for the audience accustomed to usual social science writing. So, kaya nga, medyo mahirap-hirap talaga ito. Kasi talagang palaliman yung pag-aaral sa kanilang mga kustombre, sa tradisyon, saka sa kanilang way of life. So, ito yung mga samples. So, kaya na siguro magbasa. Okay? Like child rearing practices of the Manobo tribe, a close encounter. By the way, my study in my dissertation, uh, the title of that is The Participation of the Manobo in the Development of Their Community. And that was my dissertation. So, sa hindi pagpahambog, my paper was uh, chosen as the best dissertation. So, I received an award. Of course, dito sa atin, kayo, ang thesis ninyo, pag maganda, Pinagpipilian din namin yan and you'll be receive, rec and you will receive an award. Of course, with a medal and a plaque. Okay? So, yan. The example of this type. The ethnic, the ethnography. Okay? Next case study. Ah, ito. In your undergraduate, siguro, alam na alam niyo itong case study. Pinapaliwanag to ng mabuti ng teacher ninyo. Okay? A case study is an exploration of a bounded system or a case or multiple cases over time through detailed and depth data collection involving multiple sources of information rich in context. Okay, yun yung tingnan. Usually, ang mga respondent to 5, 7 to 10. I think 10 pinakamataas para na talagang maayos yung gusto mong makuha sa kanila. Then, The context of the case involves situation, situating the case within its setting, which may be physical, social, historical, or economic. So, that's more on case study. Then, the data collection strategies include the direct observation, interviews, documents, archival records, participants' observation, physical artifacts, and the audiovisual material. So, Kailangan yon. Then, analysis of themes. So, yung thematic na tinatawag natin kanina. Or issues and interpretation of the case by the researcher. So, yun yung case study. So, ito yung mga samples. Okay, case study on the male prostitution in Cebu City. Meron ba ganun? So, of course, sino mga respondent mo dito? Yung mga male prostitute. Okay. Gender differences within the academia. A case study on the probability of promotion. Ayan. Gandang study. By the way, itong gender differences within the academia, pwede mo itong gamitin na title has a piece. Because may subject tayo about gender, about human rights. Andrea sa gender. Itong case study on male prostitution, pwede ba? Yes, pwede rin yan sa piece. Okay. Then, to summarize the characteristic of the types of the qualitative research, take note on this. So, in the case study, a single person, program, event, processes, institution, organization, social group, or phenomenon is investigated 
within a specific specified time frame using a combination of appropriate data collection devices. That's according to Creswell in his study in his book 1994. So that's the summary of case study. Second, ethnography rooted rooted in anthropology. Sabi na natin kanina study about man. Ethnography involves the study of an intact group, logically defined, and its natural context for a sustained time interval. The researcher is typically an observer or a participant's observer. That's also according to Creswell. Then the third summary on the phenomenology, in essence, this approach investigates an individual's or group's perception of reality as he or she contracts it. These realities may be expressed as an event, program, relationship, emotions, etc. So, phenomenology is rooted in philosophy. Okay? That's why when I took up my course in the Seminary of Philosophy, one of the subjects is phenomenology. Okay? Because it is rooted in philosophy, ang phenomenology. Then, number four, Summary, the grounded theory is a general research methodology used in building naturalistic theory and is rooted in sociology. And you know what is sociology? Socio meaning society, people, then logos, ang logi. That's according to Strauss and Corbin in 1994. Then the last one is the biography. The research relies on records, diaries, oral histories, photographs, and other artifacts to describe, analyze, and explain past events, philosophies, etc. That's more on the summary on biography. So take note of this diagram or table. The method used is the ethnography, biography, then yung five, phenomenological, then case study, grounded. Ano yung focus on ethnography is more on the context of culture, biography, documentary, phenomenology, people who have experienced a phenomenon, kaya nga a live experience, develop a theory from ungrounded in the field, so that's ground theory, then the case study is more on organization, entity, individual or event. Then, take note. Sample size. Tingnan yung sample size. If it is ethnography, walang linagay. It can be one, two, or more. Okay? Documentary, siyempre, tao pinag-usapan. Gusto mong i-research. Either one or two. Kaya kung damihan mo, patay ka sa pag-aaral mo. Phenomenology, it can be five to twenty-five ang iyong respondent or participants. Ang grounded, medyo marami-rami din. The case study, sabi ko, either five, 7 or 10. Usually, ganun sa case study. Kasi pag badamihan mo, hindi mo makuha masyado yung kanilang pag madami, mahirapan ka talaga. So, the data collection, nakasulat na rin yan. Okay? In ethnography, more observation interviews, story from individuals and documents, that's biography, phenomenological, more on interviews, then the grounded, of course, interviews, then open and actual coding, then of course, case study, more on interviews, documents, reports, and observations. Now, so, what you are going to do is you have to answer this one, then you have to submit this at the end of this lecture. There are 20 items. The instruction is simple. Identify as to what type of qualitative research are the following. So, once again, the 20 statements, ibig sabihin, tag-iisa yan, 20 points yan. Identify as to what type of qualitative research are the following. So, kayong magbasa, then submit that through my email. That's, I think, 20 items ito lahat. So, the first one is identify as what type of qualitative research are the following. Then, identify what type of ito, another one, another 20 naman. 
an first 10, another 10, so 20 lahat-lahat ito na dapat sagutan. Ibig sabihin, 20 points ang uh, kapalit nito. Okay, pagbutihan, balikan uli, pag-aralan yung limang types of qualitative research. Oh no, 30 pala siya. The first part is 10, the second part is 20. So you have to give me at least 30 answers that's equivalent to 30 points. Okay, think malinaw yan. Now, so you have to submit kasi from the first meeting during our face-to-face, -face, then I sent you the lecture on research, then the parts of research the send ko na then ito ngayon okay then yung the last meet last Saturday may isang documentary or lecture din na nasend ko na hindi naman yung ako nagle-lecture but I think it's useful nakakatulong yun pa paano mapabilis mapadali yung iyong study okay now on the qualitative research so first submit the 30 points identify the 5 uh, 30 uh, statement, identify what types of qualitative research and this one, you have to make also a one page reflection paper so two in one ito yung identification at the reflection paper with the ito, something to ponder what is the application of qualitative research in your life or in my life, so in life so after knowing about qualitative research, as this question. So, answer this question. Reflect this question. What is the application of qualitative research in your life or in life? Okay? So, kung 30 yun, I'll give the points of this reflection 15. So, expected that you have also to submit at least 3 paragraph. Kasi 15 points man ito. So, with that, I hope you learn something at saka nadagdagan yung kaalaman ninyo about research, about the methods of research, especially on the qualitative research. Then hopefully by next Saturday, I'll also give you a lecture, a recorded lecture on the quantitative research naman. Kung may tanong, you can ask Mr. Google. You can also ask through our messenger, to my messenger, tanungin mo. But palagay ko uh, simplified naman itong ating presentation so thank you for listening do not forget to answer the assignment that this will, I think this will be our first assignment on this research so the 30 points plus 15 points reflection paper so once again thank you God bless everyone dalay gon ang Dios. This is your friend, Brother Juars Alferas from the Order of the Discalced Carmelite Secular. Mabuhay tayong lahat.